and let's touch on Clemson. I know you mentioned Brockman's alma mater in Syracuse. We had Dino Babers call in for his birthday back uh, back in that. July. That was fun. And just he's contagious. I mean, his his, his oh personality is contagious. And and at the um, at the conference media gathering, Syracuse got a couple of first place votes over Clemson. I mean, what do you make of all of that? I think here? he is a top fifteen, maybe top ten coach. If you look at what Dino Babers has done in the three places he's been, right? right? Remember, he was the guy who got Jimmy Garoppolo cranked up in a one double A school, turned that place around. Went to Bowling Green, got that place going in year two. And then Syracuse, with all due respect, Syracuse they football were was, was god-awful and <laughs> irrelevant. I mean, it had just kind of fallen off the radar. And by year two, you know, they upset Clemson. Last year, they win double-digit games. And what I think is really interesting here is, and I'm, you know, the recruiting rankings, there is a, there is a lot of correlation between how the online recruiting sites rank you and, and what happens on the field. Not in the case of Syracuse. They have had classes ranked an average of 55th since Dino Babers has been there. But what he has done, it's really smart evaluations and really good player development. They've gotten a lot faster, a lot longer, and they're really deep in the secondary. And they have a, a quarterback who's going to take over from Eric Dungy named Tommy DeVito, who was probably the biggest recruit. He's a New Jersey kid. Biggest recruit Babers has had. I think they're a team that is probably the second best team in the ACC, which granted isn't saying that much after Clemson, but I think they have a chance to be a top 15 team. And his name is going to be really, really hot uh, for some big jobs if they're as good as I think they are because of how well he's built that team. And also you watch a speech of Dino Babers in the locker room. He is a dynamic speaker. No I question. mean, just, no, and I, I know, can't but, put a price on that but, either. And, but he's basically the only thing keeping from Clemson getting into the, college football playoff well, i mean i mean you know, is that is that what we're talking about here because they play week three so they it, have, well they have tech yeah they have texas a right. and texas a&m has has talent jimbo fisher's done a good job i don't think they'll win that game but texas a&m when it was at college station last year gave them all they could handle and kelly bryant helped them you know the quarterback who's now in missouri helped them out here in los angeles babers you mentioned would be a hot candidate for a big job would that one of those jobs be right here in los angeles i, I think if this season plays out the way i think it will i think they'd be foolish not to at least consider him usc we're talking yeah about we're him. talking about a guy who is from the west coast spent a lot of time on the west coast dynamic personality has proven it now three times that he can put a big jolt inside of a program really exciting brand of football I would think he would have to be on the radar now. So why do you think USC season might is not going to go Clay Helton's way? Look, I think they'll be better than they were last year, which isn't saying much. They were five and seven. I think the arrival of Graham Harrell, who comes in and takes over for Cliff Kingsbury, who was here for a month, yes, um, right. he's brought them an identity they needed. I think they will probably win eight or nine games. But here's the upshot of this deal, because they have plenty of talent. They don't have like the Pete Carroll level talent, but they got enough talent to be a top 15 team. The problem, I think, is he could have a really good year, make a big improvement, go win nine or ten games. I just don't think that the USC leadership, and I suspect by the time this plays out, you know, come middle of fall, they probably will have a new AD, I believe. I think Lynn Swan, the new president there, will say, hey, look, we got to go in a different direction. There's been too much bad stuff that has happened on Lynn Swan's watch. But when they get through this, even if a nine or 10 win season, I just don't think the power brokers at USC are gonna go, I'm convinced after this that, oh yeah, Clay Hilton is the right guy for this. Cause I think there's a lot of people there who felt like he shouldn't have been the head coach when he hired him. And they definitely don't feel like he should be the head coach now. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate, but this is, I think the bar is gonna be so high that I and the schedule is loaded the first six games. I just don't think they can get to it. Well, the issue also might be that nobody knows who the real power brokers at USC is right now because the football program is not the biggest fish that that's being fried on that campus right now. I mean, there's a lot going on downtown here in LA, and we'll see how it all plays out. At this point next year, the head coach of USC football, Clay Helton, Dino Babers, Urban Meyer. Give me rank it for me. To look before I, let I you don't go. think it's going to be Clay Helton. I'm I'm not sure, and I guess full disclosure, I work at Fox. I'm yes. not convinced it's going to be Urban. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they made a run at. Don't you have another Penn State guy around here? I wouldn't be <laughs> another Penn State guy around here. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. Sure. Uh, I yeah. wouldn't be sure. I wouldn't be surprised if they made Franklin? a run at James Franklin. Wow. I mean, I've said that before, but I just think that 
he's another guy. He, he did mm. worked wonders at Vandy. They're they're really good at Penn State. I think if you're if you're USC, I think you got to consider guys like that rather than say, hey, we're going to take somebody from the NFL who's never been a college coach or a college head coach. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on Directv for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.